today we'll go through a little bit about me so you know where I'm coming from, and then we'll dive into the content, which is just how engineering relates to farming now, but also into the future. So back in 2014, my family and I started a little nonprofit, and it was called Bountiful Backyard. It is called Bountiful Backyard, and one of our flagship programs now is the Philomath Farmers Market. We uh, got the 2021 Outstanding Market Award for, uh, from the Oregon Farmers Market Association last year, so that was exciting. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all thanks to our intrepid uh, market manager, Janelle. So we started by establishing and reinforcing gardens at schools and community gardens around Benton and Lynn counties. Meanwhile, I was getting a degree and going to work in industry as a mechanical engineer. And so I had one foot in agriculture and another foot in mechanical engineering. And so as of this year, I have established a mechanical engineering consultancy called McGuire Mechanism. Now, McGuire Mechanism is out there to serve small producers, both farmers and builders. So one of the things that we need to really understand as a mechanical engineering consultancy is efficiency. And that is the topic for today's presentation. Now, efficiency is one of those things like the adjective low. You know, it doesn't mean anything by itself. If you go into a room and say, wow, this is low, are you talking about the temperature or the mood or the altitude? So efficiency is similar. In engineering, you can't get away with saying, oh, this system is efficient. You have to have metrics to define efficiency. So we're going to go through a couple different types of efficiency today. But in order to really understand the metrics behind efficiency, we have to break the farm down into a system. So a system is just a black box with inputs and outputs. Right? Everything's a system. Everything has some kind of input that is the output of an earlier system. And if we break down the inputs a little bit further and the outputs a little bit further, we can see that a farm might take money, time, energy. You know, energy is human labor, or fossil fuels, or whatever it is that's going into it. Meanwhile, it's outputting produce, meat, eggs, heat. All systems produce heat. We can consider that negligible. And compost, waste that can be recycled. And an efficiency is just the ratio of an output to an input. So you would measure an output and measure an input. And based on the ratio of those measures, you get a metric. And efficiency is a metric. So let's go to the next slide. One common efficiency is economic efficiency. And this is what that spurred my motivation for this video. I mean this presentation. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the camera. Um, some folks can't make it today, and so they asked if I would film. Uh, the, so I'm reading some headlines in uh, you know, entertainment news, uh, Fox, CNN, all those. And uh, they say, you know, this method of agriculture is efficient. And they stop there. And I cringe as an engineer because that doesn't mean anything. And so when you look at the data that they're using for their article, it typically is economic efficiency. And so economic efficiency is lucrative output per costly input. So in the case of a farm, produce per time and money, your uh, primary expenses. Uh, specifically, revenue per expenses, yield per cost. That is economic efficiency. Another efficiency that I want to draw folks' attention to is engineering efficiency. Engineering efficiency is useful energy output per total energy input. Or, in the case of a farm, the waste that you can recycle per the total energy you put into the farm. And so, looking back at our little diagram there, that's maximizing the useful recycling of your compost, whether it's manure or water that's running off or vegetable biomass, and then minimizing the amount of energy that you put into that farm, whether it's uh, biocides or, or, or fuel or the production cost of your solar cells, whatever it might be, that's all energy going into your system. 
the degree to which a system is efficient is dependent on the measures used to calculate the metric of efficiency. So a farm could be optimized for profitability, which is, which is important. That's, that's a part of agriculture. So it might be 95% efficient in terms of economic efficiency, but only 5% efficient in terms of engineering efficiency. Conversely, a farm might be optimized for useful recycling of nutrients, and it might be 95% efficient in terms of engineering efficiency, but only 5% efficient in economic efficiency. So now let's visualize this. So, for example, consider a steer. I, I like this example. I have calculations and references on a little one sheet in the back, if anyone is interested in how I got these numbers. If we look at the market value of a steer, over the course of its life, if you took all its you know, 10 some tons of manure, that could be sold for about 100 bucks. Meanwhile, the meat could be sold for about $700. So if this steer were to be optimized in terms of economic efficiency, the farmer or the rancher would look at it as a meat producer with manure as the byproduct. But looking at the same system using different measures, the manure has 7 million calories, whereas the meat only has 375,000. And so if the rancher wanted to optimize his farm in terms of engineering efficiency, then he would maximize the useful recycling of that manure. And so this is the puzzle that we have, uh, which we'll get into a little bit deeper in a sec here. Let me make sure I don't get off track. So depending on what metric we use for efficiency, the successful farm is going to look very different. So consider machinery. I don't know if folks can see these numbers, but basically we go through uh, different machines and the columns are how many hours and how many calories are required to till one hectare. That's about two football fields of area. So if we look at the human power, the biomechanical system that's a human, it would require 400 hours to till a hectare and about a little over 200,000 calories. Now, if we got a little six horsepower tractor, it'd take about 25 hours, way less time, a 16th of the time. But it would take another you know, 70, 80,000 calories to do it. Or we could get a 50 horsepower tractor and do it in four hours. But it would take another 70, 80,000 calories. And so the principle here is as we move down from human or, more, or up from human to these larger and larger machines, they become more and more economic efficient, but less and less engineering efficient. And so those big machines are good. I love those big machines. But my, my mission here through my work is to dial people back a step and relook at how we can advance technology in a way that balances economic efficiency with engineering efficiency. Now, one other point on this is there's also electric tractors and those kinds of machine. I, I don't have data for this right now, but my understanding is that they are more energy efficient than the tractors until you look at their entire life cycle. If you look at the manufacturing process for the photovoltaic cells and the batteries and then the after they're obsolete, what do you, how do you recycle that old battery waste? Then they are comparable with the other tractors. So the leveraging the biomechanical system somehow I think is important in the future. Let's see here. So, so back to that puzzle. This is gonna be a bit of a theme. The farm of the future will require more labor, I believe. But one of the silver linings of that is that can make a farm more productive in terms of production density. So if we go to the next slide, one principle that I have learned again and again from farmers in our area 
is that when they have a small plot, they can tend to the plants at an individual level. And they can also uh, apply the level of labor that is required to introduce the complexities of natural life. You know, you could layer fruit trees with understories and um, uh, strawberries under your blueberries and you can, you can pack in that production density. And that is more difficult for highly economic efficient farms that are typically one crop because they're optimized to be farmed quickly. So if we were to scale up an engineering efficient farm, which is typically very, very small, we actually surpass the production level of these economic efficient farms that are much bigger. The problem is it requires a tremendous amount of labor. So you can look at a quarter acre quinoa plot. You know, in someone's garden, a careful gardener might extract 15,000 pounds, I'm sorry, 1,500 pounds of grain. Uh, but it might take them 100 hours, right? That's a lot of care. Meanwhile, a highly economic efficient farm might farm an acre in 10 hours, but they'd only get 2,000 pounds of quinoa. And if we were to multiply that gardener's plot by four, they'd get three times as much harvest but it would take them 400 hours. So the pain point that started all this is the, the media I read calls the economic efficient farm efficient, but we need to remember the engineering efficient farm is also efficient in a different way. And I think over time, that metric of efficiency will become more and more important. That is engineering in the farm of the future. So let's see. So one result of a focus on economic efficiency is specialization, which is good and bad like anything else. So if we go to the next slide, this is a plot from the USDA. You can look at farms in the blue line and farm size in the red line. And if we look at you know 1950 onward from the middle of the plot, the quantity of farms decreases but the size of farms increases. So the farms are getting fewer and fewer and the size is getting bigger and bigger. So, you know, 1950 now, it's something like seven million farms to two million farms. The acreage on average goes from about 150 to 400 acres. And so who cares? Uh, the reason we should care is I think best shown if we look at the progression of how animals, humans, and plants have separated over time. So if we go to the next slide, before 1850, and I'm not saying we should ever go backwards, I'm just saying we should advance technology and remember things that worked. The, the primary producers, the primary consumers, and the humans live together. And so all of the nutrients coming down or coming up from the bottom were processed and recycled back from the top. From the 1850s to 1950s, humans consolidated into cities. That's urbanization. And the markets were there for a time but got lost with recycling the human waste back into the farm. But we still took the energy and nutrients from the primary producers and the primary consumers. <coughs> After World War II, 1950 and onward, we have been able to, we've had the luxury of, of separating the animals and the plants because we've been able to uh, leverage fossil fuels to create extremely efficient, in terms of economics, tractors. And I love, I love tractors. Um, I love tractors. I love diesel tractors and gas tractors more than solar tractors personally, but you know what? The problem with that is it has created a nutrient surplus on animal farms, which is now something we have to deal with. It's become a hazard and it's created a nutrient deficit on crop farms. And because there is no or minimal economic incentive to transport nutrients from the animals to the plants, we've had to mine and, and uh, process our own ammonia and other fertilizers. And not that that's a problem, but it's something that we've had to do in order to maintain our economic efficiency. And so the problem 
that engineers of the future, and I say engineers because I'm an engineer, but you know, it's just anyone who's ingenuitive. That's what engineering means, right? The engine just means something new. It's to reconnect the consumers to the producers through useful recycling of waste. So it's, it's that missing link. If you go to the next slide, that link will show up. So now, now, now we're just at the, the puzzle phase. I don't have all the answers, but I know this is a problem. And it would take another presentation to go deeper into the problem. But the engineers and the ingen uh, uh, ingenuitive people of the future have to solve that missing link. And so from my perspective, based on my experience, that is learning from the past and, and making our farms look more like wild gardens. And some examples of that might be, uh, I have a friend who raises hogs and he has some invasive Himalayan blackberries. And so he has the hogs come through and gobble up the roots of the blackberries. And in doing so, he feeds his hogs and doesn't have to apply the energy intensive herbicide. And that's just one example. It's a little bit closer to nature and it's extremely engineering efficient. Another example is I have a friend who moves cows from paddock to paddock and they leave their cow pies behind. And then they send their chickens in and they scratch at the manure to get at the larva. And as they do so, they scratch the manure over the grass. It fertilizes the grass. The chickens control the insect population. The topsoil layer is healthier. The cows return and eat healthy grass. And that's another example. Uh, there are other examples. You know, there, there's a doctor, uh, John D. Liu, who does some interesting work of reverse desertification where to fight a rose and he plants trees. And, and I, I never thought about it until I was listening to one of his lectures. The, the water, when it rains and there's a tree above, instead of running off, it will puddle up and it'll saturate the ground and the roots will hold it in. And that'll enable more micro life to form. And then the leaves fall and creates another layer of topsoil. And so just by having a plant there, you totally reshape the landscape. And so understanding that kind of natural cycle is at the core of engineering efficiency, which is simply recycling waste. So if we go to the final slide, what is engineering in the farm of the future? It will be the development of technology that is optimized in terms of engineering efficiency. And that is the useful recycling of waste. It'll be maximized. And so, uh, I know, I, I did the presentation with Lo, uh, my wife, Mrs. McGuire, Laura, I'm not sure if I want to say your name, but um, the, the thing she said at the end was, what's the conclusion? <laughs> I was like, oh crap, I don't have a conclusion. It's just like, a, it's a problem we all have to solve. I don't know, but, um, yeah, so the, the, the two cents I have as a mechanical engineer is uh, we all have been given the most efficient biomechanical machine known to man. So of all the tractors and uh, do, do hickeys and gadgets out there, there is nothing as efficient as your own two arms. So thank you.